Hello, Tom Lavecki here with a very special edition of the Armchair NBA. Today we'll be focusing on is and Dragada, the Calabrian Mafia, and beating the USA. There's been some recent developments. Hello, Tom Lavecki here with the latest edition of the Armchair NBA. Today is day two of the 30 for 30. 30 shows, 30-minute 30 workout every day, and 30 minutes of reading and or audible every day for 30 days. Today's day two. If you haven't, if you missed it, I interviewed Rita Giganti, Godfather's daughter. Yesterday was a fantastic interview. Rita is a gentle person. It was um, surreal for me to talk to the Chin's daughter. But we had a great conversation, so check that out. That is on yesterday's show on the Armchair MBA. I highly recommend checking it out. As for the book that I'm reading as part of the 30 for 30, my first book out of the gate is Robert Greene's Mastery, How to Basically Be the Master of Your Domain, of Your Vocation, of Your Life. Um, he's also the author of The 48 Laws of Power, which happens to be one of my favorite books. Is also the founder, uh, the writer of 48 Laws of Seduction, which is another fantastic book. I'm about a quarter of the way done there. I'm going to do my 30-minute workout after the show, along with my 30 minutes of Audible as part of the 30 for 30. So today, we're going to be discussing, is Indragada invading the USA? Now, uh, for those that do not know what Indragada is, most people do, I'm going to put a link above to my full long-form interview with Anna Sergi. Uh, Anna Sergi, she is a doctor, a doctorate out of, um, what is the University of Sussex, uh, Sussex um, in England. And she is uh, of, of Calabrian, she's from Calabria. She's from that area. Some of the big towns there are Plati and some other towns that are in Dragada strongholds. Now, the Dragada, as I'm gonna cover today, and I'm gonna probably do some more episodes later on, is much different and vastly different than Sicilian Coast in Austria and much different than the Komoda. So also I want to refer to my interview with Antonio Nicasso. That is in the library, just interviewed Antonio Nicasso armchair. That video will come up. Um, we talk about how Indragada really infiltrated Canada. And the way Indragada works is it is a multinational or a global organization with the exception of maybe Canada, maybe Canada, we're not even sure, all roads lead to Calabria, and the Indrini, which Indrina, which is a clan or cell, reports to the local person in each country, and that country reports back to their mendimenti in Calabria. Now, how it differs from Sicilian Cosa Nostra? Well, it's pretty simple. First is its structure, okay? This is going to look a little confusing, uh, but it, it there's a lot of levels to the game. You have Pachotti, which I always kind of thought was a Sicilian term, but I guess the Calabresi use it as well. Um, there's Simp Semplici di Giornata, pretty much simple, low-level guys that are kind of doing some work. They use the word Camaristi, also, again, uh, kind of like the Comora and the Sagaristi, which is um, kind of the bloodline. That is Societa Minore. These are the low-level guys that are kind of hanging out um, want to be in it, but in order to be in it, what the biggest difference versus in Cosa Nostra is you need to be either blood and or married in. Very rarely are you an inducted member of the honor society um, by not being related. And then you kind of go on, uh, Conte Ulione, uh, Infinito, and so forth. The highest, as I always thought, was La Santa, or Senti um, the highest structure here to the left, or Santista. However, there's even a higher, and La Santa is kind of like the commission or board of directors, but there's even a higher level that I'm still researching that these guys are invisible, they're in time politics, they're judges, they're lawyers, they don't even exist in terms of Indragada, but they're part of a ruling panel that's even La Santa, they're really the ones controlling the strings. So there's a lot to unpack here, so let's go. Okay. So now, in terms of the structure on how it's set up, right? You look here, you got Australia, um, Toronto, parts of um, different parts of Italy. And again, each one is an Indrini. Indrini is like a family that is local and or 
um, Esteta, which is foreign, right? So pretty much Indragada, get to Nicole in a second. Indragada operates in Australia, South America, North America, widely in Canada, obviously Europe, and it's believed to be operating in six of the seven continents. Obviously, there's not much drug trade in Antarctica. And how do they make their money? And again, check the link above with my interview with Anna Sergi. They actually made their money initially by kidnapping. And there actually was a point where it was so bad, the kidnapping, that there would be in the newspapers kidnapping season where people would post the ransoms or they would post, hey, missing and most of the time, it was um, the Indragada, ergo, um, the, uh, Paul, John Paul Getty's grandson. And interesting enough is that they negotiated it down to like $1.7 million or whatever it was, right? What he did was the reason why it was at a certain amount is only a certain amount that he could write off on his taxes and then actually did a 4% loan to his son to free his grandson for the remainder. These guys were shrewd with their money. That's, I guess, why uh, Getty was a billionaire. But nevertheless, that's one of the high-profile kidnapping. Um, just to kind of point some of the rumblings and how I started to see that Indragada was expanding into the U.S. First, Nicola Gratetti. He's the one who is uh, proceeding over the Maxi trial um, over in uh, that's currently going on with the Mancuso clan. Um, he is literally – it's a 300-person trial. There is uh, thousands of witnesses, lawyers, so forth. It's – Pretty crazy. Mayors are indicted. Senators are indicted. Local senators on the Italian uh, ver- Italian equivalents. And it's crazy what's happening there. So really unpacking what the true power of the Indragada is. Now, the interesting enough is, though, is this is just one clan. There are many clans. And as a surgery, uh, Anna Sergi describes it, it goes by name, surname. So your, your certain name, let's say the Romeo clan, or um, there's, there's literally hundreds of them. And then uh, it goes all the Pele clan and, and many others. Then it also goes by where you are. Um, these clans do operate independently. However, the Indragada makes up the consortium. They do work together on the drug trade, the finance drug shipments, then the hundred millions of dollars. Well, where do the drugs come in from? Okay. One, Rotterdam, which uh, the Italians do have a big present there. Antwerpen, uh, which is on the Adriatic side. Hamburg, which Indragada has set up shop. There was a big killing there, about six uh, uh, members in Dragada uh, during a massacre about, ooh, about 15 years ago. And if you see on the bottom, Jetta Tauda. Jetta Tauda is in Calabria, and that was actually built by the mafia. And as you see, although it's one of the smallest, it's one of the fastest growing. So imagine, for example, the Gambino family building a port in New York, controlling a port in New York, and then importing drugs in that port. That's the equi- equivalent of Jetta Tauda. So um, I need you to give you some background how Indragada got into drugs um, after they started making so much money in kidnapping. They got into construction and local um, local rackets like anybody else, but they saw the value of cocaine in Europe, and they also kind of jumped in where the Cosa Nostra fell off. The Cosa Nostra was dealing a lot in heroin um, after the Pizza Connection case and after the Corleone. They don't get me wrong. They're still involved. They do a lot with the Gambinos of Cosa Nostra here in the U.S., as well as the bananas, um, but not nearly to the extent. So basically, the Indraga came and filled that vacuum and took over the, mostly the cocaine trade and some of the heroin trade in Italy and even parts of the U.S., which we'll get into. Um, so there's some rumblings and some research that I've done. Um, there was an article about uh, some men that tied to the Italian mob that showed Indragada that were uh, buying up a lot of properties in Miami and South Florida during the Great Recession from 2007-2009. These guys are Italian businessmen. They come to certain areas of the country. They buy up a lot of land, and it helps shield Indragada's holdings through um, land ownership. Also, you see it in Colombia, Switzerland, and parts of Germany. So what happened recently, literally this week, um, uh, the anti-mafia officials arrested 18 Indragada members. And interesting enough is, although um, there was about, what was it, 76 Indragada members were arrested uh, in Italy. The FBI arrested 18 members of an Indragada cell out of New York. So this is kind of one of the first times where there was a sweeping in, indictment or a sweeping arrest that was transatlantic that uh, targeted Indragada 
here in the U.S. There was a little bit of a dust up with the Genovese a few years ago, but that was a local local Calabrian family that entice it in Dragada. They used the Genovese clan, a Genovese family to finance it through some of the pizzerias and holdings they had, but it was a very small, low-key operation. This is a bigger operation, um, and where these guys come from in Italy is the Corleano Comito Group, did a local branch of Belvedere Spinello, and they run uh, protection and drug racks in the area, but appear to have a cell here in New, uh, New York, uh, in New York City. Now, again, here's a dynamic. So they arrested 200 people total, okay? 76 in New York, 18 in the U.S., but also reached out to Spain um, and different parts. And what's interesting about Italy is arrests were out of Rome, Naples, Brescia, Salerno, Perugia, uh, obviously, you're at Calabria because that's where they're from. Trapani, which is in Sicily, and then Catanzaro, which is a stronghold for the Indragada. What does this mean? Okay. It's showing you that they're rooting out of it, you know, southern Italy into northern Italy. We kind of knew that already. But these 18 arrests are peculiar for two reasons. Number one, we knew that Indragada was operating in the U.S. We didn't know to an extent. So for a Drini or a clan to have 18 people here at minimum, it's probably much larger, is a big deal. And I highly doubt that they're just buying the drugs from South America and transshipping them to the U.S. They're probably operating here in the U.S. in this market. Now you're like, well, do they pay the Cosa Nostra? Who do they tied in with? The close ties that we can find in our research is either with the Genovese or Gambino clan. However, under multiple sources, I contacted federal sources that I have um, that are willing to give me as much information as I can, Ex federal sources that can speak more freely, people that were in the life, as well as some other contacts that I've cultivated over the years, have said that basically Indragada operates here autonomously from the American Cosa Nostra. They don't pay them, they don't deal with them. They don't. A lot of the time, the local Cosa Nostra don't even know who they are. It's not like the old days in Brooklyn where you had the guys in Diker Heights versus guys on 18th Ave. It's not like that because they were all eventually rolled into the U.S. Cosa Nostra, particularly the Gambino brothers and family. But in this particular case, the Indagata operates solely in the U.S. What I found even more interesting is of those 18 arrested, they were all Italian nationals, but the names were not released and the FBI was involved. So this was a joint task force, uh, task force led by the Italian government along with the FBI, with Nicola Gratetti, who was actually of Calabrian descent as well. So this is a big sweep, but what's crazy about it is I don't have the 18 names to give you. I just could only confirm that the FBI um, uh, completed these uh, sweeps, and in the U.S., and 18 Italian nationals were arrested that were part of an Indragada Indrini. So this raises a question, is Indragada invading the U.S.? I've been talking about this for a while. Um, in Italy, the Camiso clan... Um, it's very strong. In my opinion, that's who's been rubbing out the, uh, the Vizzutos over the years. When they took out the Catroni family, which was a um, um, a uh, Calabrian family, and the Sicilians took over, there's the same expression, Gabados, hard-headed. They're hard-headed, and they don't forget. So I think the father, uh, Nicole, Nicola Rizzuto, Vito, I think I did get poisoned. The son getting killed. It was around my birthday. It was around this time this year. That happened a few years back. The brother-in-law, I think a lot of that have to do, in my opinion, from the return of the Indragada, from Hamilton, from Toronto, taking over, moving in. Unfortunately, they're getting involved with fentanyl, which is a disgusting drug. Um, I'm going to do a separate episode on that, on how that it's made in the U.S. and how the dynamics business-wise and socially are affecting the mafia, but are affecting our children here in the U.S., as well as many of us. I lost a part of the drugs, not from fentanyl, but fentanyl seems to be the new heroin. So anyway, with that being said, um, just a quick and dirty one uh, for you. Uh, what I mean by dirty is I wish I had more research and more information to show you, but this is a developing story. And at the very bare minimum, sparks a conversation. Is Indragada invading the U.S.? Drop your comments below. Let me know what you think. Day two of the 30 for 30. Check out the Rita Gigante interview. Check out um, the interview that I'll be doing tomorrow. It's going to be in my home. A very special one. I'm excited about that. I may do it live if I can. Um, and don't don't be afraid to contribute to the channel. There's a little thanks button there. If you watch it this far, it means you're obviously a fan of the show or like the show. Hit thanks. 
any monies and contribution comes in helps George and I run the channel, helps us get us more resources and helps us get us better reach for you guys and your viewer pleasure. So anyway, I've been talking about this for a while. The endogamous here in the US, the question is how much and how so, how are they interacting with the different um, local uh, mafia sources, which again, in my opinion, I think they operate autonomous, autonomously and frankly are a lot more powerful because these guys have um, kind of like institutional reach, which I'll do another episode on. So thank you for checking out Armchair MBA, day two to 30 for 30. I got to go work out. I have to go read or listen to my book, Mastery, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs>